Servus Männer, it's Red Pill Germany again. Today I want to talk again about our dear friends from Anatolia, about Turkey. So I know there are a lot of other things going on, but I wanted to make this video for quite a while right now. Many things got in the way, but here it goes. Over the last years I occasionally talked about Turkey, because well, we have somewhat of a connection with them, you know. And particularly in this year I was interested or focusing on the economic crisis, the debt crisis and the currency crisis. And during the last weeks there were some more interesting developments that I want to report on today. The biggest news from early November would be that both the head of the Turkish Central Bank as well as the finance minister are no longer on their posts. Erdogan fired the head of the central bank and just on the next day his son-in-law the finance minister Berat Albayrak declared via Instagram that he would step down. He is married to the second most delicate flower of the Orient Erdogan's daughter Ezra and even though he is a Gen Xer he steps down like a true millennial via social media using an Instagram post. The reason is a little confusing for me. He says he does it for health reasons, but then he says he wants to be there for his family that he neglected. So uh, something like that, right? Personal reasons. Of course, it has nothing to do with the fact that Erdogan is not pleased with his course or that the lira is in free fall. Although to be fair one has to say that this course of more debt and of massive spending and of low interest rates is exactly what Erdogan himself always wanted. I should remind you of his wonky economic theory that low interest rates and lots of money printing is actually stabilizing the foreign exchange rate and makes for a strong stable currency, right? So the lower the interest rates, the lower the inflation. That is basically his mantra. So you can go back until 2007 or 2008 and you will see that with a little bit of superimposed short-term noise, the Turkish lira has been devaluing at a more or less constant rate with respect to the euro and the dollar. And these are also the two foreign currencies that are most relevant for Turkey because that is what their foreign debt is in and this is where they do business with and this is from where they would also import or let's say in these two currencies they would import things they need like fuel or raw materials for their manufacturing sector. Also agriculture is heavily dependent on fuel. So you cannot even say hey let's forget about imports we will just produce agricultural goods. Not only imports but also the prices of domestically produced agricultural goods are going up as the lira devalues with respect to the euro and the dollar of course. So if we look at the euro for example within the last five years the Turkish lira dropped to one third of its price from five years ago. During that time the price of an ounce of gold went up by a factor of five. Since 2005 Turkey has an inflation rate that is always almost in the double digits. They are desperately trying to stabilize their foreign exchange rates which has led to dwindling net reserves especially in 2020 especially right now. It's also interesting to note that this year their net reserves minus borrowed money is actually negative. That means if you subtract what they already borrowed in order to get foreign currency and stabilize the exchange rate they are actually in the negative. And once again I want to point out that having debt in and of itself is not a bad thing for a country but if you have foreign debt while your currency is devaluing like no tomorrow you have somewhat of a problem. But how does that look for the people in Turkey? Well we already mentioned inflation and food prices and stuff like that. But how does their income look like? I mean if you have inflation but the wages go up like crazy that shouldn't be a problem if the whole process is balanced. But you can see that household income per capita is declining since 2013 more or less. I read 
that half of the country is in minimum wage jobs and 13% are unemployed. The youth unemployment is even much higher than that. It is almost precisely twice as high at 26% right now. Now I have to say that the minimum wage was going up quite significantly but not as much as the lira devalued, not as much as the inflation you have. And I guess if you get the minimum wage in Turkey then you're not doing super great anyway. So let's look at the people who work in the manufacturing sector which is where I expect people to have higher wages than that. And here you can see that from the beginning of 2020 the wages in the manufacturing sector were going down quite rapidly. So we have a nasty combination of unemployment especially for young people together with dwindling wages while the minimum wage okay that is increased and an explosion in the prices especially for necessities like food. That does not look good for Turkey and I just wonder for how much longer they can keep going on like that. This week there is actually supposed to be a meeting where a new strategy and maybe even a new interest rate will be declared. I should also say that the lira went up by 10% after Erdogan's son-in-law declared his resignation. But this might just be a short-term effect. Or the markets might think that maybe Erdogan will change his policy right now. But the thing is that if the markets, if the investors are disappointed by what they see, if Erdogan continues his dubious path or if he doesn't raise the interest rate by enough, then this is just really a short term effect and it will drop again just as it did before. So I really want to tell you that this is not just about the financial interests of a globalist investor elite. These questions are really concerning the Turkish people. And we can take it as a case study about what happens if the leadership of a country is shamelessly printing money and trying to boost their economy year after year after year with high inflation, low interest rates and luring in foreign investments. If you want to be drastic or hyperbolic about it, you could even say that the Turkish leadership has turned their country into a labor camp for international corporations. When we look at this, for example, how Erdogan's son-in-law was trying to praise his country as a investment opportunity for foreigners. Let me just read these lines to you here. Turkey is a strong large market with a middle class with growing purchasing power, rapid economic growth and a gross domestic product that has tripled over the last 20 years. Turkey offers investors unique opportunities with a production base, educated human resources and strong logistics infrastructure. Let me translate that into plain English for you right here. Turkish worker good, Turkish worker smart, work for you long time, little money, work for you long time. So even though he was referred to as Turkey's economy czar, I don't know, that is not like a czar would look like to me. He looks like a young man who got this position because he married a powerful man's daughter and he doesn't really know what he's doing. And to be fair, he probably was just carrying out orders and now he's just the fall guy for Erdogan. He didn't really implement anything new and you can see that the lira has devalued exactly on the same straight line as it does since 2007. There was no real change here. Erdogan just thought that he needs someone to take the blame now that it is actually approaching zero if it would fall on linearly like it did before. And as we don't have negative exchange rates, this is when it becomes really interesting. So what could be done about that? Well, as I previously declared, I think this all goes back to a severe shortage of labor. So Turkish people in Europe should really consider to go back and save their homeland. Now is the time that the fatherland needs them and staying here in warm and cushy Europe is just a little bit cowardly and selfish. 
So I think if all these smart and skilled laborers make their way from Europe back to the homeland, all these problems would surely go away. Maybe it's also the brain drain. I mean, since the 1970s, all the engineers and scientists from Turkey were, of course, going to Germany and other European countries. So these smart people would be, of course, a big benefit to the Turkish economy. And that is why, if you are a Turkish patriot, you should probably go back to Turkey, especially in this desperate hour of need. I heard that Turkey requires a lot of rocket scientists, especially now in northern Africa and in their own backyard. I want to thank all my supporters and my subscribers. If you enjoy these presentations, like, share and subscribe. And if you want to support my work, you can do so directly via PayPal or via Patreon or Subscribestar. You find the links in the description down below. Let me know down in the comments what you think about this topic and if you think that Erdogan might be able to turn it around with a new head of the central bank and a new finance minister or if you trust his indications that he has changed his opinion about interest rates or if you think that it will just go on like it has in the last decade or actually even for longer already now. Take care. Servus. Kameraden. So many things happened and there was never time, so I'm doing it now.